I have gotten so much better. The carnivore diet got me better. I started sleeping. I started seeing a lot of improvement. I actually can't even imagine going back. I really can't, uh, especially with my kids. When I give them something that's not optimal, that's not a whole food, I feel icky about it. And when they come over and they eat my steak, I just think, oh my gosh, their brains are getting bigger. Their brains are being nourished. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's going to help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube, go to bodyconfidentbook.com, sign up for updates, the book comes out in September. All right, everybody, it's Coach Bronson here, and today I have the honor of talking to Adrian, who is a former Biggest Loser competitor who found a better way. Is that a good way to introduce you? Would you say you found a better way, Adrian? Yes. Or you could say has tried <laughs> everything and found a better way. I don't know. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about um, your journey. Like first, before we get into The Biggest Loser and then after The Biggest Lunar Loser, just tell us a little bit about yourself. What got you to the point where you're like, hey, I want to do this thing, and then we'll go from there? When you say want to do this thing, you mean carnivore, or do you mean the biggest loser? Biggest loser. Like, what got you to the biggest loser? To, what got you to the point where you're like, I want to be on the biggest loser. This is going to be amazing, et cetera, et cetera. Well, my name's Adrian. I'm from a small town in northern Minnesota, and I'd been overweight my entire life. There's never been a day in my life where and the, and the weird part is, even as a child, I knew I was overweight. I remember mm. before even elementary school, looking at my thighs and thinking they were fat. So those wow. negative body thoughts have been there my entire life. And it certainly didn't help that I was bullied quite a bit in school um, mm -hmm. for being overweight. And um, I, it, we had kind of a rough uh, start because my dad had me very young and my mom wasn't ready to be a mom. So I was raised by a single dad. Um, so my whole life, I'm overweight, I get into high school, and I'm like, I'm going to change. So I'm, instead of it becoming this negative thing where I'm just going to sit with it, it pushed me to want to be an amazing athlete, okay. to want to be an amazing student, to to show everyone, and what I didn't realize is I needed to show myself, that I wasn't mm. just a fat kid. So I joined mm -hmm. soccer and cross country skiing and golf and track and basketball. And I, I lettered in many of my sports and I was the captain of many of my sports and I did all the things. But then when I went to college, um, there was no more, you know, there was unlimited food and I gained mm -hmm. 60 pounds. Wow. Okay. There, there, there was no more sports. Yeah, so right. when I'm a super lonely college kid, I really want to date, but I have no self-confidence whatsoever. I'm about 225 pounds and um, I go home one summer and my stepmom and I go on the Atkins diet and we lose some weight. The minute okay. I went back to college, I gained it all back. So I, I just feel at this point, like this is who I am. I'm overweight. I've always been overweight. I'll never not be overweight. And that's when I saw the TV show, The Biggest Loser. And I yeah. thought, look at that magic. That's what I need right there. And when so was this? When, so which, which, which one were you on? Or when were you I, on the show? The OGs. I was on season three, which was in okay. uh, 2006. And I was 22 okay. years old. Wow, wow. Early 20s. That's okay. That's crazy. All right. So we're 20 years ago almost. Can you believe that? Holy <laughs> cannoli. And... <laughs> You had this experience. How successful was the show for you? Like, did you lose a lot of weight? Yes. So I started out around two, almost 230, and I got down to 161, and wow. I was very lean. I was very wow. lean, and this happened okay. very fast. Yeah. Um, How long was the show? Like, what was the period of time that, that you were on, that you were in the program? People don't realize how long it is. Uh, a filming week is not the same as a week in real life because they have yeah. production and, and so forth. So I lost that 60 or 65 pounds ish mm -hmm. in three months, okay. I think. And that, that's a lot for a girl. Now, what had happened was they had one person from every state and 36 of us were sent home on day one. And they said, whoever wow. loses most weight gets to come back. 
And they did not okay. even exit interview me because they were like, that little girl, she's not going to beat these 350 pound men. Not only did I beat all the 350 pound men, I beat everyone. I beat everybody on the ranch, even the people who had the trainers the whole time. I beat everybody at home. I beat them all. Wow. I just, so I was going to say, you, what did you follow? So the people on the ranch, they have the trainers and the trainers are okay. there a couple times a week. We yeah. got a doctor, a nutritionist and a psychologist. They did body scans. They gave us a food plan. They gave us macros. They told us how to exercise an hour and a half in the morning, an hour in the evening, spread them out 10 to 12 hours. Here's what you want to eat at each meal. Like they gave us an exact science plan to our current body composition. So I followed that okay. to a T. And then in between my two workouts, I worked at my dad's store, which was manual labor. He has a rental store. So I was just moving all day long. Wow. Okay. So you essentially lost five pounds a week for three months. Yes. That's crazy. And I wasn't that big that to start crazy. with. crazy. Wow. Okay. Now, that was a lot of fat loss really fast. Um, there's a couple of things I want to ask about this. this we, we're going to dig into this a little bit. Um, was there anything in this process? Because, you know, a lot of what I do in my coaching and, and a lot of, you know, we, we've talked a couple of times, I'm very mindset oriented and I want people to understand what they're getting themselves into when they see these changes. So they're ready for these changes. Was there anything in the process of, of this program that said, hey, you're going to lose a ton of weight. Here's what you can expect on how things are going to be different and how you can maintain it afterwards. As an at-home contestant, we were given so many tools and support. But once I became a ranch contestant, it all dropped off. All we had really? were these trainers who were there mostly when the cameras were there. Uh -huh. There was a lot of downtime where they weren't there, left on our own. And so there was a lot of disordered things happening because yeah. people were desperate. And there was not a lot of direction. There was not a lot of support. Okay. And then at the end, you lost 60 pounds. You get all of this stuff, this major change in your body. Oh, you blinked. It, are you still there? I'm, yeah, I'm, we're good. Oh, there you are. Okay. Sorry. What'd you say? Yeah, you're good. And if it does that, don't worry about it because it's pulling on each side. Okay. So it'll just, as long as we don't completely disconnect, we should be good. So you had this major change. Um, you lost all this weight. Was there anything for after the program? Like, okay, we're done. The show's over. We're not filming anymore. Have a blast. You're on your own. Was there any kind of follow up? Anything that's saying, hey, did you did you learn anything that you could take home with you? So when we got voted off, there was a therapist in the truck just to make sure we were okay. And that was okay. it. There was no reverse dieting information. There was basically if you just work out eight hours a day for the rest of your life <laughs> and eat 1200 calories, you'll probably keep it off, which isn't true. It turns out. Not at all. Yeah. So, wow. Okay. So literally this is just for the dramatic effect of the show um, and whatever else. Wow. Okay. And I want to say, I think the producers have really, really good intent. And I think yeah, that there's just what, a was, lot of, yeah, there's a I lot was, of, not a lot of people know about reverse dieting. Like, does your doctor ever talk about reverse dieting when they tell you to reduce and restrict? They don't, yeah. not really, you know, I think that it's just a lack of well, maybe and, not, and the reverse dieting is part of it, but there's also just a part of it of wonder, it, it really kind of gets me to wonder what's the purpose of the show, right? If the idea to is people. to help people, yeah, is the idea to, so if it's just to show, hey, this is possible, okay, I can see that that's, that, that there's definitely, because I, that is a huge thing for people. People thinking they're stuck, they have no way out and they need to do something, but they don't know how it's not, there's no way I could do this. So being out there and saying, hey, this is possible, look what these people have done, I think that's fantastic. I'm worried that people are seeing that though on the flip side and saying it can be done so quickly, it didn't seem like it was that, air quotes, hard. It only took them three months and they lost all this weight. And now they're, it's, like, it's like winning the lottery. People don't realize that, was it 80% of people that win the lottery are bankrupt in five years? You know, like it just doesn't work that way because there's, a level of preparedness and expectation that we're not ready for if we have that drastic of a change, right? We haven't put in the work, we haven't faced the struggle, we haven't made sure that we have the right reason why we're doing it. We don't know, have a vision for what our life is gonna be like when these changes happen because we haven't worked into that new lifestyle. So it just, I, I want, you know, I think if anybody's listening, 
if anybody, hopefully everybody's listening, everyone that's listening to this. I hope the one thing I want you to get out of, you know, Adrian's story is that there's more to it than just a weight loss, right? And yeah. and how does that translate for you? What what else was it besides the weight loss that you were like, hey, this is what's missing. This is what I need. And this is what you went to look for afterwards. What did you, I, I went through this whole thing. I lost all this weight. This wasn't it. What What is it that you were looking for after this? I think I was looking to fall in love. Like I was so lonely and I thought that nobody would ever love me unless I lost Ooh, this weight. Wow. wow. And uh, then I did something that they told me not to do. They very much told me not to do this. They said, yeah. do not date anyone for at least six months, they said, or a year, wow. you know, very similar okay. to being an alcoholic and you go into a program and they say, don't date for a year because mm. you have a lot to process. Mm -hmm. And I didn't listen. And I got into a not so healthy relationship. Yeah. Um, but uh, th one of the biggest lessons that I did learn was one that I didn't think I thought, this is just the way I am. I am just overweight. This is all I'll ever mm. be. And mm -hmm. they helped me realize, or this process, this opportunity helped me realize literally anything is possible for any person. Literally anything. I mean, millions of people apply for this show. Who would ever mm -hmm. think that this chubby girl in small town North Dakota is going to get picked? <laughs> literally right. anything is possible. And I'm so grateful for that lesson. And another thing yeah. was... You know, I thought so little of myself. Well, I'm the exact same person inside here, even when I got smaller and I had to figure out, do I value myself now? And I didn't. I just because I got smaller didn't mean I changed my value in myself. Mm -hmm. It actually yeah. took several years later and another thing to happen for me to process that and feel better. Yeah, that's that's huge. And I think without that, we tend to make decisions that aren't going to last or going to set us back or going to make challenges more difficult than they need to be because we don't really, we're not, okay, we're not making choices based on what we think is best for ourselves. We're making choices based on the fear we have of how other people think about us or thinking that we're not good enough. There's so many other outside pressures that are making us make decisions. We feel like we're supposed to do something or we need to do something instead of this is what's best for me and I want to do something because I want to do this. Uh, I know that's something I, a lot of my clients struggle with is when we dig into what's your motivation, why are you doing this? Well, I'm doing this for my kids so that they have a break. Okay, great. Why does that? Why is that important to you? What is the thing that you can say you want to do that has nothing to do with you mentioning anybody else in your life? And that's hard for people to, to answer that question without referencing other people's desires. Yeah, it was also super hard to, like I gained my weight back right away and mm -hmm. I had to figure out, am I only going to be happy if I'm a certain weight or can mm. I be happy as I'm working towards things? Can I be happy with all the things that I do have in life? Well, there's more to happiness yeah. than just um, what I weigh on the scale. And so that's something that's been super helpful is gratitude and mm -hmm. working on humility, thinking more about other people than just myself. And there's been a lot of work here that was not done on the biggest loser. It had to come later. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's good that it finally came and that it came. That's where most people need to get. I think there's a, a lot of correlation between your experience and what I see in my, in people I work with and that the fitness and the nutrition is easy in comparison to the inner work that we need to do to really enjoy our lives the way that we want to enjoy it, to really appreciate ourselves, to really understand our value and self-worth and to really keep the, the, that motivation for wanting to improve and be better and experience life and really enjoy relationships and all those other things that we have going on. I can give anybody a macro plan. I can give anybody a workout plan. That's the easy stuff, right? If you work hard enough and you don't eat enough food, you're going to get skinny. That's great. Um, that doesn't mean you're really enjoying your life, you know, and that's what we're trying to get people to. So what is the, you got into a relationship that wasn't super healthy after The Biggest Loser. Is that part of your story in finding an animal-based diet and moving on to something that actually worked for you? Or is there is something else in that story as well from uh, just the doing the work to kind of appreciate yourself, 
be learn how to be happy in your body, regardless of what weight you were at. What was the next step in your journey from a nutrition perspective that said, Hey, this is really what I want to do. And here's what's going to work for me. I'll try to make it brief, but <laughs> hey, we got time. Um, There's no rush. I get into a, a very um, emotionally abusive relationship and mm -hmm. between that and then gaining my weight back and feeling like a failure, I really got into alcoholism and it mm. wasn't pretty. And I, after I had my first two, so I, I married, I committed into that okay. not so great yeah. relationship yeah, and yep, uh, had two kids. Um, and after the second kid, I, I had personally grown up with a parental figure, my grandma who struggled mm -hmm. from alcoholism, and I was not mm -hmm. going to have that around my kids. Mm -hmm. So after I had my second kid, I went into a 12 step program and that is where the work happened. That is gotcha. where I learned not to compare myself to other people. We all have worth. We all are loving. We all are creations. We all have this. And so then not only am I not downplaying myself as much, I'm starting to see other people's value and appreciate them more too. So just more love for all people, less judgment, you know, have a little bit more compassion when I see other people struggling because we're That's all huge. just human. That's huge. And then, yeah. then I started realizing that I'm also a human who deserves love. And I was in an abusive, loveless marriage. And mm -hmm. so then I left. After that, um, right before I left the marriage, I actually was still struggling with this weight. So I had gastric bypass. I don't know if you knew that part of my story. I didn't talk I did. about it a lot because I didn't I did. want people to, uh, I didn't want them to think I cheated. I still worked out. I still had to restrict what I was eating. And it worked for about five minutes until the hypoglycemia and the anemia kicked in. Mm. And it's been a struggle ever since then. I mean, the hypoglycemia has been debilitating. And so I've been on a, a restriction diet, an elimination diet, trying to control this hypoglycemia for 10 years now. And so I'd restrict, wow. restrict, restrict. And where we're all coming here is that after my fourth kid, my autoimmune illness got debilitated and I needed to do something. I mean, I was just eating low glycemic vegetables, maybe a few right. keto -y type, type uh, sugar-free things and meat. And uh, my dad said, you got to cut everything but the meat with that autoimmune mm -hmm. stuff you have going on. And so that's mm -hmm. how we ended up here. It had nothing to do necessarily with wanting to lose weight. It had to do with wanting to get my life back. Yeah. Yeah. And how long ago did you decide to do that? January 2023. So about wow. 16 okay. months ago. Right. Okay. I, I actually and... started eliminating November 2022. And then I was fully, you know, I wasn't going to be black and white, I guess. I, I, yeah, I thought yeah, these yeah. vegetables were good for us. So sure. it took a couple months to really eliminate it all out. And then I was drinking that really nasty coffee creamer. That's not cream at all. It's just chemical and soy. Mm -hmm. So I had to cut that mm -hmm. out too. So by now, January, 2023, I'm just eating meat. Okay. Now what, um, autoimmune issues have you been dealing with besides the hypoglycemia? So the hypoglycemia has been an issue that's caused other issues, I'm assuming. Is that where we're going? Uh, so I have Hashimoto's and I have okay. horrible hormone issues, but the root cause mm -hmm. where the, tr the route I'm going down is the chronic inflammatory response syndrome. And since mm -hmm. starting the Shoemaker Protocol, I have gotten so much better. Um, the okay. carnivore diet got me better. I started sleeping. I started seeing a lot of improvement for about two months and then it took a dive and I was like, what? I'm doing all this mm. and I'm still sick. And so once it took a dive, I had seen Judy Cho's information on this, started getting testing. And so it's a great complement to the shoemaker protocol. And, and honestly, so, I can see how a lot of people start adding stuff back. But for me, when I add the plants back, my hypoglycemia comes back. So this is kind mm, of a bandaid yep. until we can work on the chronic inflammatory response syndrome. So can you talk a little bit about the shoemaker protocol and what that kind of entails? I, it's not something I know. I don't know a lot about it. I, people may not have heard of it before. So a person can have trigger events and each event mm. can cause them some inflammation. So I, one of my trigger events was my bad marriage being in an emotionally bad state for a long time causes you inflammation. Um, mm -hmm. And that can cause autoimmune illness. Another one was I slipped and hit my head on the ice and I actually left my body Ooh. for a second and bumped back in. So I have a pretty serious head incident. 
Yikes. Um, okay. I think I had the surgery. Surgeries can cause inflammation in people. And then finally, mm -hmm. I got the bad virus. So we have all these events. Gotcha. And then for some <laughs> the people. Virus. I'm sorry. That's funny. I've never heard anybody call it that before. Um, once I caught it, the inflammation just never turned back off. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, then I started becoming reactive to things I didn't realize. I, I don't think I was reactive to them before, but now I definitely am. And one of them is water damaged building. So oh, okay. the Shoemaker protocol is reduce your toxins, which for a lot of people can be the buildings. And like where I live, all the buildings are 100 years old. We have wet basements. It's moldy here. So yeah. finding a yeah. clean environment has been tough. And then next, you have to take prescription binders because charcoal and clay aren't quite the right um, attraction to pull onto the toxins we're trying to pull out. Um, also, I've tried mm. those and my liver is so clogged up that it makes me unbelievably ill. So we're working on pulling the toxins out. And then, then you work on all the, when your body is so inflamed, you start getting sub infections like, um, like limes, like parasites, like uh, GI issues, uh, there's a nose infection. So you start working on your sub infections. There's a whole step by step by step, but really we're getting to the root yeah. of the inflammation and that should relieve my hormones, that should relieve my thyroid, right. that should relieve the other pieces. Is it mostly a combination of like diet and doing specific things to help flush or uh, clear out systems? Is there anything that like, do they work on your sleep, on your exercise or the other aspects of it that are kind of more holistic or is it really sp focused on specifically pathways per se, toxin pathways? They definitely work on, um, you're going to feel better if you're on a low amylase diet that's suggested. And I couldn't really tell you what amylase is because I was already on the meat <laughs> diet, right, but right. so there is a diet piece there's definitely okay. a, I stopped running and I started walking to try to be more gentle on my hormones and my adrenals. Um, mm -hmm. Instead of doing high intensity weightlifting classes, I do weightlifting at my own pace. Um, okay. I have a little bit more compassion for myself when I wake up and I'm busy, you know, mm -hmm. so there, there definitely are other pieces. And then there's a prescription piece. But ultimately what I like about this protocol is it's not a life sentence. It's, because right. that wouldn't be fixing you like blood pressure medicine that doesn't mm -hmm. hear you or you'd be able to stop the medicine so eventually mm -hmm. down the line you get to stop taking these things because you actually are feeling better yeah gotcha okay wow that's crazy so biggest loser gain the weight back weight loss surgery a whole bunch of issues from that from your health basically going down the tubes and now you're fixing it with addressing some specific inflammatory issues, changing your diet, changing the way you work out, trying to focus on just doing things differently and not stressing out um, over. I, the one thing I'm hearing, which I don't know if you specifically said, um, you're not worried about weight loss as much now. You're trying to be healthy now. I mean, who wouldn't love to get to your optimal weight, but there's some things sure. that are outside of that. I mean, ultimately what drives me every single day from falling off is the fact that I want to feel good. And another yes. piece in here that, that the biggest loser didn't address is addictive behavior around food or coping around your relationship with food and being mm -hmm. able to be full and nourished, knowing the food I'm eating is nourishing me. It's really improved my relationship with my food, especially because I get to be full. I was never yeah. good at yeah. the not being full thing. You'll have a different reason for eating it, right? It's almost like yes. you're eating with intent. You're eating with purpose now. It's not just mindlessly shoving things in your face. I hate when I mindlessly eat. Used to, That's a right? red flag to me of like, yeah. I need to reach out to someone or, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, what is a, wow, I'm just I'm trying not to go too deep because I feel like we could go in a whole nother tangent. What is your process now? How do you envision maintenance or what your life looks like being healthy going forward from where you are now versus what it may have looked like after you were done with the show? Does that make sense? After I was done with the show, I felt like someone threw me off a ship and I was just treading water and trying not to drown. 
That's what I felt mm. like. And there was a mm. lot of panic because, you're, you know, let's say you just lost all this weight. That's tough enough for a person to process, but to do it in the limelight, to go back to your hometown and people scream, right. oh my gosh, there's Adrian, have articles about you. And then to gain the weight back, there was just so much shame, so mm. much humiliation, so much a feeling of failure. This mm -hmm. time, I feel like a winner. <laughs> to be you full, are a winner. I get to be nourished. My skin looks better. My sleep is better. And you know what is the biggest of all? I had so much anxiety my entire life. Everybody knew it. I just reeked of anxiety at all times. Mm -hmm. And now mm. and I have days of overwhelm and I think that's hormonal and I'm working on that. But overall, mm -hmm. I feel really calm. I could have never done this interview before. I was just way too anxious. Really? I would have probably lost hair and needed a few drinks and... Because I was just so oh anxious goodness. all the time. And now yeah. I just feel like, hey, I'm going to go hang out with Bronson, you know, best-selling author of three books. Everybody knows him. You know, he speaks <laughs> at all the conferences. No big deal. You know, I wish. Yeah. Life is a lot more fun now. It's when your attitude is better and Isn't your that... heart is better. Yeah. And your food is better and everything is better. Like oh. the impact, the impact of, of nutrition on brain health, I know it's becoming in the last year specifically since dr palmer's book came out it's becoming more in the limelight about how important you know i know there's every couple of weeks i see a new study about the ketogenic diet or the carnivore diet or low carb diet impacting you know depression or bipolar or schizophrenia or alzheimer's dementia whatever it may be um but just the anxiety that people go through because their brains are inflamed because of the food that they're eating at the basic level. If you think about the tier of all the different mental health issues and anxiety being at the bottom, it's also the most prevalent. I would say in my experience, I know so many people that just spend so much time being anxious about things. And when the inflammation in their body goes down, uh, it's, there's, it's, it's like almost like they're a different person. Like, who are you? You're not freaking out about all this stuff that you used to freak out about before. And that the impact of that on somebody's life, I don't know if you're dealing with anxiety now and you're not sold on a uh, low carb carnivore, keto, whatever you want to try diet, whole foods diet. That's even if it's just going whole foods, just get rid of the process crap and you're going to see mm -hmm. a whole bunch of different things happen in your life. Yes. And a lot of people too, yeah. they don't realize the impact that caffeine's happening. But once you take it out for some people like me, we're so sensitive. If I even try to add it back, it's, I can feel it in my heart and people don't correlate yeah. because yeah. they drink it every day. Um, how much that does affect your brain and your mood for yeah. some people. I know some people I, don't I, do a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you I, a coffee drinker? It doesn't seem to make a difference to me. I'm, I love coffee, but I highly recommend, and I drink coffee now because I've tried it. I've tried going without it. So I know that taking it out doesn't seem to make a difference. Having it in doesn't seem to make a difference. So I'm good. I'm going to have it because I like it. Uh, I highly recommend that for anybody, and this goes for anything, not just coffee. If you are stuck somewhere in your journey, there's something that you know you, you're not get, taking out that you should probably take out and see what happens. And I highly recommend that you take that out for a while and see if you, if, if something good happens and if something good happens, then now you at least know what your options are and you can make the choice. Do I want this or don't I want this? And then it's not a question, you know, this is what I need to do to get to this next level or to get to this, where I want to go. Is that really what I want to give up or is it something that I want to hold on to and just be okay with where I am? But if you never take it out, then you're just stuck and you're floundering and you never know, right? We can't, I, I feel like everyone should take stuff out. Get to the bare bones, right? Go carnivore for 90 days, 60 days, 30 days and see what happens. You know, the worst that's going to happen is you give up some alcohol or ice cream or Brussels sprouts for a month. What's, you know, it's, it's not going to kill you. you know? And then who knows, maybe something good happens and you go, hmm, maybe there's something here, but at least you know then, right? I never thought in a million, bajillion, quadrillion years that my husband would ever, ever even consider trying this. When I met him, I was already restricting. I already had the hypoglycemia, the second husband. Mm. Um, and he was a standard American dieter. He would like order noodles and then take the chicken and throw it off to the side and then wash it down with a Mountain Dew. 
Never thought he would ever try, but he's been watching me. And after a year, he gave it a try this spring. And all he did really was cut the pop and a little bit of French fries. He didn't go yeah. carnivore. He just ate more meat and cut the pop and the French fries. He couldn't believe how much better he felt. And even though he's dipped oh back, gosh. he ultimately knows in his brain, I could feel so much better. But he had no idea because he'd been eating like that his whole life. He didn't even know he felt like crap. Yeah. Oh, oh my so God. That's huge. Never part of know. It. That's a huge part of it. And that's the one, that's the hardest thing I wish I could get people to understand is you have no idea how bad you feel because you've never felt good. Right. And for many people, you know, this is just hitting me. Wow. This is so sad. For many people, they literally have never felt good in their life because they've been eating crap since they were infants. They literally have no idea what it means like to actually get good, healthy, whole food nutrition in their body with no inflammation, no extra crap, no chemicals, and let their body actually function the way it's intended to function. There are probably millions of people right now who have been alive long enough that they've been eating processed foods since they were born. Baby formula all the way to adulthood. And they have no idea what real food actually can do for the body. Holy crap, that just hit me. That is so sad, Adrian. Oh my gosh. You know, nobody, very few people can give this story, but I've heard like, so my kids were trying to be very, very whole foods as much as possible. And some people are like, oh, that'll create disordered eating. But the thing is, I have friends who only gave their kids whole foods. And now that those kids are adults, I can tell you that they're not disordered. And in fact, because all they've had is good nutrition their whole life, when they try what we're all eating, the rest of the garbage processed food, they feel like crap. So they yep. don't have disordered thinking. They actually get to feel what it feels like to have it. And so I think it's actually okay to raise your kids on a whole foods diet. Oh, it's, I would absolutely. If I could go back now, I would have raised my kids carnivore in a heartbeat. Like you're eating bone marrow and meat and eggs and that's what you're getting. And you're getting cream and go for it. Have a blast all day. That's what you're getting. You're hungry. Go make some bacon. All right, let's go. You know, like totally down. I wish I, I had known about this back then. Man. That just brought me down a level like that just brought me to earth a little bit. I just it's never really occurred to me that there are people who have never eaten real food in their entire life. Yeah, that's crazy. There's very few of my that's friends crazy. who've only had the whole foods. There's very few. I mean, I know two of them and I I still hear people yeah. say all the time, oh, if, if all we give them is these whole foods, they're going to be disordered when they try the candy bars one day and no, they're going to but why, not like and that's the candy thing, bar. That's the thinking. Why do they need to try the candy bar? What is the thought process there? Who says you need a? Oh my gosh. You're going to get me going now. Okay. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. So, yeah. Right. So in this whole journey that you've been on since 2006, no, since before so your whole life, right? We're talking about lifestyles, the whole life. And I tell people all the time, like you're on this journey, whether you're participating in it or not. Cause this is a life journey. It's not, it doesn't stop. Cause people ask me all the time, well, how long do I have to do X, Y, or Z? It's like, well, how long are you planning on being alive? Do you want to enjoy that life or not? That's how long you need to participate in the process that this, it, this isn't a, I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose weight or I'm going to follow carnivore for a couple of years and then be done. Right. If you're doing this so that your life is better, you need to keep doing it so that your life stays better. Right. I mean, do you have any, any qualms or concerns about eating this way and it being sustainable? No, I love, I actually can't even imagine going back. I really can't, uh, especially with my kids. Now, mm -hmm. when I give them something that's not optimal, that's not a whole food, I feel icky about it. I don't feel good about mm -hmm. it. I, and when I, and when they come over and they eat my steak, I just think, oh my gosh, their mm -hmm. brains are getting bigger. Their brains are being nourished. Look at these healthy <laughs> kids. You know, when I look at my parents, my parents aren't perfect carnivores by any means, but they eat a lot of meat and it makes me feel good. Like maybe, yes, maybe I'll get to have them longer. You know, maybe yes. I really am hopeful and they're very mobile. My parents don't look their age. They're very mobile and mm -hmm. I'm very grateful for that. And that's what I want. And I, I look to people who are older than me, who are, running around, lifting weights, putting their art, you know, Sally Norton, that hottie McTotty, you know, I, I look up to those people and I think that's, that's what I want. I want to be mobile. I want to be active. I want to have a brain. I want to have great skin, mm -hmm. great sleep. That's what I think. I, and I want to have strong bones. 
that's that's what I think about. And I, the, most of all, too, though, you never know the feeling of like truly being full until you've eaten just a steak, like just meat. Because when mm-hmm. you add that mm-hmm. other stuff in, it can mess with your hunger cues. You get really good right. and full when you eat meat. And I love what was being that? full. What was that process like for you, understanding, relearning your your satiety signals? Because that's something that I I have people that are dealing with, I, I can't eat so much, I feel full so fast. And then on the flip side, I have people who are like, I don't know what it's like to feel full. I've never felt full before. So I'm not, I don't, like the signal's just been turned off. I eat and eat and eat and I never feel full, but I just ate two and a half pounds of steak and I still don't feel full, what do I do? And it's like, okay, we gotta work on, there's things to do on both sides of those coins, but you know, what was it like for you? What were the things you had to kind of reset with your satiety? What was tough was that I had that surgery. And so I had a difficult Mm, time eating meat, period. And I didn't realize, Mm -hmm. I thought that I was eating meat, but I wasn't, I because it hurt my stomach. And so I would avoid it and I would Mm -hmm. eat processed proteins instead. Uh, So what was really a process was, having faith that I even could eat meat because I, this was 10 Mm. years past my surgery, nine years past my surgery. I'm still struggling to eat eggs. I'm still struggling to eat hamburger. Um, yeah. And, and so that my process was a little different in having faith that I was going to be able to even eat this meat, but I just gave it Mm -hmm. a try and I'm going to, I'm not going to lie after the first week, by the end of it, I felt like I'd rather not eat than ever eat another piece of beef for the rest of my life. Oh yeah. But I yeah. I persevered and then I started craving it again. I, I did not cave because I was like, I need to get better. I need to be a mom. I need mm-hmm. my brain back. I need my body back. So I persevered through that and my stomach juices started producing better and I've been able to eat more. And now like for breakfast, I had nine ounces of picanha. And I feel grateful. Okay. I do get full. I do. And it, maybe that's yeah. partly from the surgery. I don't know. But I do mm-hmm. get full. And I'm really grateful for that. I love mm-hmm. that feeling. Awesome. Okay. Well, what are some things have to that say, you can... Imp- yeah, good. Sorry. From time to time, the full signal doesn't happen. So let's say I eat 10 ounces of picanha and I'm not full. I know I need to wait a minute because sometimes that reaction is delayed and I don't want to feel sick. So sometimes I yes. do wait and I go, you know what, if in an, if in 30 minutes, I'm still really as hungry as I feel, I can come back. No big deal. Uh, but maybe this is enough and I should wait a minute because the feeling will come. It just might not come for 30 minutes. That's, yes. That's a huge, a huge realization for people is the belief that we have around certain routines it's similar to to when you tell someone, hey, you can have a steak for breakfast. When they're like starting carnivore and like, what? I don't know what to do for breakfast. I'm tired of eggs. Well, there's a whole bunch of other options. Make a burger. And because, But they never thought of making a burger because that's not breakfast food, right? So mm-hmm. that perception of what breakfast means is can be whatever an individual wants it to mean. For me, it means ground beef many days. And that what you just said of of eating something and then waiting for 30 minutes or 45 minutes, maybe even an hour sometimes to see if that was enough. And then going back, if you still feel hungry, a lot of people are thinking in their head, they've got this perception of when I sit down, I have to eat everything then because that's the meal time. And then there's, it doesn't even occur to them that, Hey, the food's not going anywhere. I can stop eating right now. And if I'm hungry in an hour, I can come back and finish it. It just, it just never even enters their consciousness that that's an option because they're thinking it's dinner time at five o'clock. If I eat at five o'clock, I have to be eat and then I'm done. So if I don't get it, then I got to starve and I got to wait till the next meet the next, I got to wait till breakfast to eat again. You know, it's like, no, you eat at six o'clock. If you feel like you're still hungry again, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I think that's that's a that's a huge little tip there for people to to pick up. Yeah, and so usually though, I'm say, ten well, hours, I'm good an hour later. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Because and that's a good tip for anybody who's trying to who's dealing with the I don't feel full when I feel like I should be. If you are eating enough food that you feel like I should feel full right now, but I don't, it's okay to stop. There's nothing that says you have to, and that's one of those misleading things we were talking about. You know. Um, before we, we hit record 
was, you know, anybody that says this is how you should do it, you just need to stop listening to them. So people that are out there saying eat until you're full, that's not for everybody because now we got people who don't have full the signal in their body turned on to tell them when they're full. And I'm dealing with people now who are literally eating two and a half pounds of meat at a meal and then wondering why nothing's working the way that they were told it's going to work because they're eating mm. two, three, four pounds of meat a day because they're being told to eat until they're full, you know, and they're literally eating until they're about to burst, you know, and it's, it just doesn't work that way. So learning where you're at is key and be reasonable with the things that we're doing. Don't go crazy. Um, where are you, where you're at now, where you've been, you've got a heck of a story, Adrian, I'm telling you, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in the last 20, 20 plus years. What are some of the key takeaways that you would give for people to help them like you realize that it's possible and then stay on track along the way, stay on the path. Cause we, we not, we don't always stay on track, but if we can keep moving in the right direction. So what can you do to help people understand that it's possible for them and then how they can stay, keep moving in the right direction long-term. I really want people to know, like I got down to 161 and I was quickly up to 265. I mean, I gained all my weight back plus more like within a year. And I was there for 10 mm. years, almost 10 years. I had gained that hundred pounds. And when I was pregnant, I got even bigger. At one point I was 330 pounds. And I really thought wow. that because I tried so many things that this is it. This is how I am. That's because I would try. I would try so hard. I'm so type A. I would try so hard. And mm -hmm. I just never truly in my heart gave up. And I do think that, you know, maybe carnivore isn't for everyone, but there's a spectrum somewhere that your body is going to light up and feel better. And so there's a couple of things yes. in there, you know, where's that spot for your body? And then for me, I've had to join support, like to mm. keep going, you know, I'm part of multiple groups of other people who are doing what I'm doing because nobody else is doing what I'm doing. So I like to be around people mm -hmm. or talk to people who are doing what I'm doing. Another thing that I do pretty consistently is if not every month, if not more, I write down why am I doing this and what do I see and where do I want to go with it? And like one of my That's major awesome. whys is to have a healthy family. I want my kids to see me not eating that processed food, see me eating these things see me out walking. I take my kids with me on our long walks in the sun. So there's the family, the support, writing down your why. Sometimes I need to set up my home to be a little bit more friendly to my goals. Sometimes that means getting rid of the coffee pot and putting it in the garage. Sometimes that means asking my family if we could take a break from cheese. We actually have a second mm, fridge yeah. now. Yeah. that the cheese is stored in so I don't have to look at it every day. <laughs> you know, so right. sometimes setting your house up to be friendly. Sometimes I'm having a difficult time. So like I eat a lot of ground meat like you because I'm trying to be, you know, simple and affordable. But mm -hmm. sometimes I need to go get some flank and ribs. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. I need to treat myself. So those are the things that I do to try to keep on keeping on and enjoying it, especially if you join a community, like you have a community, it's so much more enjoyable. Yeah. That's awesome. Those are fantastic steps and tips. I think you hit some of the big ones that I love to talk about. I really like the, the setting up your home to support your goals. I call that controlling your environment. And I think that's a huge, that's a huge piece, you know, working with your family, communicating with your family is another one. You know, I deal with a lot of women who are hesitant to ask their family for help and support because they're the ones that have been helping and supporting their family for so long. They don't know how to sit on the other side of the fence and say, look, guys, I need support now too. And that's a really tough challenge, right? And they're the ones always giving out. How do I learn how to take in? And uh, so that's another, another piece to talk about and think about. Awesome. Well, this has been fantastic. Thank you for being on, AG, and I appreciate it. Where can people find you? I know you got a YouTube channel that hopefully I'm going to be on soon. Um, you got some lives that you do with a bunch of other ladies. T tell us a little bit about where you're at, where people can find you, and what your stuff you're working on. I'm just Adrian Gledhill. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. 
um, on YouTube. I'm doing some interviews and then I'm doing a little bit of cooking. I'm doing a little vlogging. And then we have a Lioness Lifestyle Live where we interview different women and medical practitioners in the space and stories of success and hope. And so yeah, if you'll come join me, I'd really greatly appreciate it. That's awesome. So everybody go check out her YouTube channel, subscribe. I know she's trying to get that thing kicked off and exploding to take over the world. Um, thank you for being on, Adrian. I appreciate it. And we'll have to have you back on again sometime soon. Thank you for having me.